Well, hello there, everybody. Good afternoon, good evening, good night, good morning, depending on where you're tuning in from. As usual, it is so good to see all of your beautiful, happy, smiling faces once again. I feel like it's been too long, so I'm glad you're here. We got a uh, we got a big a big day ahead of us. I'm not gonna lie. We're gonna uh, we got some things to go over. We have some updates to share. We've got some content to cover. We had a whole lot of stuff. But first, well, it just wouldn't be alive without saying hi. So, Rob Corporal Diesel. Been too long, buddy, from Central Texas. Good to see you. Kadosh family. Lule said hi in the chat. Jesse. Oh, Kelowna. That's right. I remember. Yes, Kelowna is amazing. I've, I've got a buddy up there right now. Actually, I've got a few friends up there, but um, Kuzmich moved there a while back. Marina. KJ. You're here. Cryptic Digital. Alexandra. Let me see. Can I add some of these? Oh, yeah. The thing's working. Project Family. Robert from Missouri. Good to see you. Leandra. Hola. Como estas? Um, oh man, my Spanish has gotten it's gotten rusty in the last little bit. Amal, hello from Egypt. Salam alaikum. We've got Gare from Gar's way from Sweden. We've got Miss THC. Hello. We've got Emil. We've got Smoke Bates. There we go. Good to see you, buddy. Lauren, so excited to be here. Not as excited as I am that you're here. Elias, holy moly, we're gonna keep going. Fellow Adam. <laughs> Good name. Good name. Howdy. Oh, they just keep coming. Susanna, you're here too. Look at this. Got the family being represented. Steph from Philly. Elias from Lebanon. Oh man, look at this. I'm going to keep clicking. We've got a bunch. Mark Lang. Hello from Melbourne. Hello, Mark. Uh, my father-in-law. Stepfather-in-law? Father-in-law, we'll just say. From Melbourne originally. Renato from Texas, San Angelo. Oh, holy moly. Okay, we'll say hi for a couple more minutes and we're going to dive in because I have I have so much stuff. Ridiculous amounts of stuff. Hey, you hiked with Kuzmich and Dan Martell. Oh, that's awesome. I've got Dan's book um, right over there. Buy back your time. Wicked. Very good book. Very good book. Yeah, it's a small world. Small world. Aaron from Cape Cod. Yasin, Joe... Excel, we've got Rishab, Bruce, San Diego, Tabby the Tabby Cat. Glad you're here. Aaron from Pennsylvania, Julia from Poland, uh, Gergana from the Netherlands, Meat and Sports, Idris from the UK, and John from Dallas. All right, well, my friends, I don't know about you, but I'm excited. I say we dive in. Like I said, we got some stuff to cover. We got a, a lot of good points and I want to get through this as, I don't want to say quickly, but efficiently as possible because I'd like to leave time at the end for us to have a chat. So by all means, keep some, uh, oh, whiskey, you're there too. Good man. Good man. Glad you're here. Uh, by all means, pen and paper, write down your notes. Uh, people always ask like, will a replay be available? And the answer is always, I hope so. I always try, but technology does not always... Um, play fairly. So next things next, let's hit the, uh, hit the like button helps with the algorithm boosts out the notifications to everybody else. And well, let me hit the right buttons here and we'll dive in. Let me know. Can you see this should say 10 K agency quick start, how to start build and scale a wildly profitable agency in 2024. Let me know. Thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs to the side. Thumbs of any kind, high five, a smiley face. There's always like a three second lag. So we say, see, good. Yes. Okay. Awesome. For any of you that have been around and watched the lives before, you know that, um, one, not every time, but like once in a while I'll get on a roll and I'll be just like blasting through things and my mic cables undone and my hair's a mess and I'm sweating and we're just, we're in it. That's where we're going to devolve to. I had my sweater. I was ready to go, but, uh, it's t-shirt. It's t-shirt time because, well, we got stuff to do. So without further ado, let's dive in. This is what we're talking about today. 10K agency quick start. How to start, build, scale, wildly profitable agency in 2024. Who is this for? This is for beginner entrepreneurs who are looking for a fast, low risk opportunity to make big money online. It's for struggling agency owners who can't seem to break past that 10K per month mark and stay there consistently. Agency owners who are already crushing it, but are hungry for more clients, more growth, and more freedom. Now, I know that I'm preaching to the choir a little bit. Let me see if I can move my face out of the way. I've been working on this like zoom adjusting. There we go. Every time I like move the screen, it kind of goes a bit. We might just have to zoom out a little more and hope for the best here. 
There we go. Uh, like I said, I know I'm preaching to the choir a little bit here, but I think it's important to talk about why we're doing this because the why drives the how, drives the what, essentially helps to uh, carry through the whole strategy. So work from absolutely anywhere. One of the big things that I had when I first started my agency over a decade ago was that I didn't want to live in a city a big city, just have access to like big clients. I wanted to be able to live where I wanted to live. And at the time I thought I was making a financial sacrifice by doing that. Not the case, not the case. Uh, unlimited profit potential. That's another one. Essentially you can start this thing as small as you like. You can scale it up. The amount of money that is possible to be made in the agency space is almost unreal, uh, almost unbelievable. Uh, I, I tell the story of like the first time I heard about people making millions of dollars online. I thought that's just nonsense. There's no way people make that much money, but they do, and it's a thing, and, uh, and we're going to cover how to do that. Start small wherever you are, scale up later, kind of hit that point. Huge market demand for your services. 33.2 million small businesses in the U.S. alone, not including Canada, the U.K., Ireland, all the rest of the world. There are millions and millions of people that need help. With an agency, you can cash flow it, which I've done with many of my agencies, so they continue to run in the background, continuing to produce money month over month, or you can sell them, which I've also done, so someone else can acquire it and take it to the next level if you like. Ability to automate and outsource. You do not need to do all of the work yourself. In fact, you shouldn't. More on that later. And this is what I call agency algebra or money math. 10 clients at a thousand bucks a month, 10K a month. 20 clients at 2K a month, 40K a month. 20 clients at 5K a month, 100K a month, which is... Um, Life-changing money. Life-changing money. All right. Who am I? Well, if we're meeting for the first time, my name is Adam Earhart. I'd be surprised if we're meeting for the first time and you wound up on this webinar, but regardless, it's good to have you here. Uh, essentially, I call myself a marketing strategist, but in the context of this presentation, marketing agency owner. That is my bread and butter. That is my history. That is where I got my start in this game. That is what has brought me to the level that I'm at now. Have started and scaled multiple seven-figure agencies over the past 10 years, have done it all. Designing campaigns, writing the copy, running the ads, doing every single thing myself. Uh, I've also built it with teams, which we're going to talk about. is probably a better and more sustainable and more enjoyable way of doing it. On the complete opposite side, built a seven-figure, entirely content-driven business and everything in between. So coaching, consulting, courses. This is just a small sampling of the courses that have been built over the past decade. Um, and I'm going to show you... Well, we'll talk about that later. Let's let's uh, let's save a little bit for the end. Also, created marketing campaigns for Google, Meta, Amazon, Snapshot, Salesforce, HubSpot, and a whole lot more. I do not say this to impress you. I say this to impress upon you that great marketers are trained and not born. Because when I started in this field, I knew nada, nothing, zilch about marketing. And now, um, well, things have progressed. Helped hundreds of entrepreneurs make millions a year. I've worked with 1,500 clients from every business market industry. My clients have added over a billion to the global economy. Again, the reason that we're really just having to cover this is to basically just say that everything I'm going to show you is not based on theory. It's based on what has actually worked for myself and for thousands of other people. What I'm most proud of though, is this slide here, because it's through the agency that it's enabled me to travel the world, um, pay for my family to go on fancy vacations, take time off to go dirt biking in the mountains or water skiing with my family or train for marathons or whatever else that it is that you want to do. So I'm not here to tell you how to live your life, just that you can. And, uh, and that's up to you. So what do we got to do? Well, we're going to cover these things today and, uh, I'm talking fast. I may, I may not slow down. We'll see. We'll see how we get there at the end. Here's what we got to do. We got to nail your niche. Got to talk about a high profit offer, go over the millionaire mindset, talk about getting clients. And then how do you scale to seven figures and beyond? And it all starts with nailing your niche. So step one to building a successful and wildly profitable agency is that we need to make sure that we are choosing the right niche. This allows you to 7x your profit and I'm going to show you how to do all of this very straightforward. The number one mistake killing your chances of agency success and preventing you from signing more and better clients is having zero predictability in your ability to generate new clients. We're going to talk about this one. You're going to see this slide again later because this is the biggest factor that kills new agencies more than anything else. It's this lack of ability to generate clients on command so you can essentially grow and scale as quickly or as slowly or as much or as small as you like. Now, when this happens, this might sound familiar. These are, um, these are not judgments. These are more like a diary entry from the early days of my agency. 
Zero predictability means your primary method of client acquisition is what we call hope marketing. So word of mouth, referrals, things that are good to have, but that you have no control over. You've got no consistent, repeatable or scalable process to generate new clients and revenue on demand. Overwhelmed with tools and technology, letting that stop you. Wasting time on useless distractions like working on my website or building a new logo or creating content on a brand new platform where there's no followers yet, rather than on what actually matters, which is getting clients. Oh, look at that. I had them all read and I just got so excited. So we just burned through them. So how do we fix it? Well, that's what we're talking about today, but it all starts with picking the perfect niche. Now, picking the perfect niche allows you to select the best one for you, making your life easier because you get to wake up excited and happy to help your clients. You're able to increase your revenue by five to seven times because you have a highly profitable niche and you make way more money while doing way less work because you understand the actual deep pain points of your niche. And that's what this is about. It's about being able to go deeper and providing solutions and services to people that you're able to get the best results for because you understand them better than they even know themselves. Now, for a bit of context, it took me three years for my agency to hit 100K a month with my first one, but it took me 30 days to do the same with my second. And the biggest hack that enabled me to do that was picking the perfect niche. So, fun fact, you can't do all the things for all the people, and you don't want to anyway. There's a saying that says the riches are in the niches. We say niche, but the riches are in the niches doesn't work. Often the boring niche, niches, there we go, are the most profitable. They're the easiest to deliver and they have the least competition. So I'm going to present you now with what I call the five golden niche rules. These are things that the niche that you choose absolutely must abide by. Number one, you got to pick a single niche, not two, not three, four, right out of the question. You're able to change your niche later. doesn't have to be a forever thing, but you do need to pick one and you want to stick with it for as long as possible in order to get started. Now, don't overthink it. There is no magic niche. I'm going to give you a list of some of the most proven and profitable ones here in just a minute, but there is no absolutely perfect. This is the best niche ever. Otherwise everyone would go there. And if everyone went there, it would no longer be the perfect niche because it would be way too competitive and way too saturated. Rule number two, the more specific the niche, the better, especially if it's relevant to your experiences and your interests. This is what makes things interesting. If you can find a niche that is relevant to you and your interests and your um, experience and everything like that, you're going to be able to perform better than someone who has no idea about what this niche is about because we need to understand them. Also sales and the ability to sell is largely a game of, there's going to be a, a little woo woo here, but energy, belief, and commitment, and you can't fake caring. People can tell when you care about them. You care about their business. You care about what you're doing and you're genuinely there to serve them. All right. Number three, the niche must need what you're selling. This one sounds super obvious, but the mistake that a lot of people make is using what I call an offer first mentality. So essentially being like, I'm going to start an SEO agency. I'm going to start a Facebook ads agency. I'm going to start a content marketing agency. That's backwards. You want to focus on the niche first, and then you design the service and you choose the service in alignment with what the niche needs. Otherwise, what you end up doing is you decide on Facebook ads and then you realize that you're trying to jam this service into a, a, the wrong niche where maybe they'd be better off with Google ads or just straight up SEO. Rule number four, the niche must be able to afford it. This is like the most obvious one ever, but you'd be amazed how often I see people going after low profit, low ticket niches that simply cannot justify spending money on marketing. Certainly not the amount that I'm going to suggest you charge. Good example here, a bakery. They might really need it, but they just can't afford to pay you $2,000. Rule number five, the niche must be in demand and growing. Do customers in that market want what they are selling? Because you're going to be generating demand for them. And if nobody wants what they're selling, you're going to have a hard time. Good example here, you don't want to be doing marketing for a newspaper company. You want to find niches, industries, markets, industries that are on the up and up. All right, here's a few proven and profitable niches. You can feel free to take a screenshot of this one if you'd like. I can pose. There we go. Good times all around. But essentially, these are all proven and profitable seven-figure niches. I have either personally done them or know people that have for every single one of these, which means 
that essentially there's not much that you can't do because this covers many, many businesses. And if you think of others that would be sort of tangentially related, like under gym, we could put, well, CrossFit gyms or this kind of gym or that kind of gym. Under dentistry, we could do general dentistry. We could do implants. We can do orthodontics. We can do Invisalign. We can do teeth whitening. There's just so many different opportunities that the niche should never really be the factor provided that you've gone through this five steps that I've just outlined for you. And if you're still at a loss, we could pick one of these. All right, moving on. How do you pick one? Well, number one, talked about this before, you got to pick something you're interested in. The goal is to truly understand the niche. The hardest niche that you're going to find is the one that you've just gotten started in. The longer the niche, the longer you stick with the niche, the easier it's going to get. This is why we do want to pick something that is at least somewhat interesting to you because you don't want to do what we call niche swapping. Now I'm dentist. Now I'm chiropractors. Now I do gyms. Now I do med spas. Now I have solar. Now I'm doing plumbing. Now I'm over here doing pest control. Now I'm doing HVAC. It's a disaster because all of them are going to have slightly different nuance and language and tone. And you want to make sure that you're sticking with them long enough to really understand where they're coming from. Like I said, don't have to do it forever, but you want to stick with it long enough to get some traction. Step two, run your ideas through those five niche rules. Pick a single one, make it specific. They must need what you're selling. They must be able to afford it. They must be in demand and growing. Next, explore, examine, experiment. Step three, watch, listen, and learn. Talk to people in the niche, read books, blogs, watch videos, listen to podcasts. Do you like this niche? Do you like the people that are in it? Do you believe in this niche enough to help them succeed? You do not want to be going into a niche in an industry that you don't like or that's selling something that you disagree with or don't believe in. Next, you have to care about your clients and what they do, right? Because you are going to be acting as an extension of their business. All right. Also, check a look at the bottom here. Timeline, one to three days max. Picking a niche is not a three-month venture. It's not a two-week venture either. We should be able to do this one to three days, a little bit of research, a little bit of time, trust your gut, start taking action. All right. So that's our niche. Next, let's talk about the high profit offer. What are we going to do for this niche in order to get them the results that uh, is going to make them happy, make you a lot more money, allow you to charge top tier. So how do we create irresistible offers, addictive packaging, wildly profitable pricing structures? Well, great quote by Alex. No offer, no business, no life. Bad offer, negative profit, no business, miserable life. Decent offer, no profit, stagnating business, stagnating life. Good offer, some profit, okay business, okay life. It's a bit of a mouthful. Great offer, fantastic profit, insane business, and freedom. This is why what we need is great offers. What we call them irresistible offers. Sometimes we refer to them as godfather offers. Essentially offers that would be absolutely crazy for someone to say no to. Your success in business is greatly determined by your ability to make compelling offers. So, doesn't stop there. You also need a high profit offer. I'm going to break down what that means right now. A high profit offer. It focuses only on the most desirable and valuable service you can offer to your clients. What this means is that it eliminates the need for you to do 20 different services. We call this the rule of one. We want one niche. We want one service, one offer, and we want one client acquisition method. Rule of one. Next, delivers results clients actually care about. I'm talking about sales, revenue, profit, money in their pocket, not likes, not comments, not shares, not views. Does this by making your clients more money and therefore it makes you more money. If you are offering services to your clients that makes their bottom line grow, makes them more money, you are valuable to them. If you offer services to your clients that makes them feel good, gets likes on their page, gets their videos, more views. You will not be around for long because that dopamine that they get from seeing a few more views is going to quickly decline when they realize that they're not actually making any more money from your services. Also, it allows you to stand out from every other marketing agency out there. In fact, this is kind of like my big call to arms, my big, uh, my battle cry of like, we create offers and we put together packages that make the client's money and that make you more money. That is the purpose of marketing. It is not simply to spread the word. It is to provide tangible business growth. Marketing should provide a positive ROI, return on investment. And if it's not, we're doing it wrong. All right, we talked about this, the rule of one. So it solves one problem, it could be client acquisition. It does it for one kind of person, i.e. local businesses. We clearly niche down further than that into one of the niches that we talked about. It does this through one specific path. 
social media, SEO, Facebook ads, Google ads, one type of thing, et cetera, et cetera. It gets results fast. Even concepts like SEO, which can take weeks, if not months, there are still other tricks up our sleeve that we can use to get clients measurable money-making results right away. I'm going to talk about those as well. And clearly this differentiates you from the competition. We do not want to be the lowest price provider because it destroys your margins. It destroys your will to be in business. It destroys your ability to deliver a good service. It ain't fun. And high profit margins, more money in your pocket. You see, what's interesting about not just agency services, but business in general, is that when you charge more money, you provide a better service because you feel, rightfully so, indebted to the person that has given you money. On the other side, when your clients invest more money in you and your agency, they get better results as well because they're more likely to actually do the things that you need them to do, like talk to their leads, follow up with their customers. There's essentially this... Um, this commitment that they've made by putting a financial stake in it. Again, we'll talk about that in a minute too. So let me show you what some examples of low profit offers are. And I know these because I have done them all starting with web design it might sound like selling a 3000 or $5,000 website is a really good idea, but we're not talking about revenue. We're talking about profit and the amount of profit that you're going to make from that website is typically going to be a whole lot lower because you've either got to build it, you've got to outsource it. It's going to take a lot of time. There's scope creep. There's back and forth. Not my favorite service to offer content marketing. Very similar. When we create content for a business, we're not able to usually directly tie that to an ROI. Therefore, are we making the money? Are we not making the money? How much can we really charge for a blog post? It's only those like top tier clients that are willing to pay premium dollar for that. Social media management, similar thing here. We're posting on their behalf. They look at us as a commodity. They find other people, video editing, anything not directly tied to your clients ROI. High profit offers on the other hand, things like missed call text back. If someone calls a business and they don't answer, we can actually text them back. We use software to do this. I'll talk about it more in a minute. Web chat widgets. We can put a widget on their website that initiates and has a conversation with clients that converts them into conversations and, uh, and therefore money is made. Google business chat, same thing, but on Google call to action forms. We put these on the website that encourage someone to take action on that actual website rather than just bouncing right off, which is what most people do when they visit a site. Online reputation management. This is a lower ROI performing service, but it is a high profit offer because it takes essentially no work on your part. We just use software and now we're able to go onto Google reviews. We're able to respond to reviews. We're able to dispute negative reviews. Clients absolutely love this one. Same thing with review requests, helping them get more positive reviews and customer re-engagement, which is perhaps my favorite service to offer of all of them, because what this enables us to do is use your clients customer list and send them an irresistible offer of their very own. Something like, Hey, we've got a couple of gift cards laying aside. Do you want me to um, save one for you? Put your name on it. We send that out to a list via SMS or via email and your clients make a lot of money very quickly. All right, let's talk about a questionable one. And this is hard for me to say as somebody that has spent over $70 million on Facebook ads and has run a very successful Facebook ad agency. My recommendation for most businesses getting started, most agencies is that we don't look at ads first. And this is the reasoning. If we're running Facebook ads or Instagram ads or Google ads or YouTube ads or Snapchat ads or TikTok ads, any of the ads, and the client comes to you with a 5k budget tops, we now have to allocate a portion of that budget to the actual ad spend themselves. So to Facebook, to Instagram, to Google, to whoever. Now you and I both know of their five grand, you're only pocketing 2,500. We get that. The client even knows intellectually that they're only paying you 2,500 and the rest is going to the big faceless corporations, but emotionally. They just see five grand going out. So I don't mind ads. I think they're incredibly valuable, but they're not my first offer. My first offer is typically a high profit one. Like all of the things we talked about, the missed call text back, the customer re-engagement, the web chat widgets, etc. because now the client has a 5k budget. We spend 50 bucks, let's say hundred and our profit is just massively higher. Also very important to remember. And in fact, this actually just came up inside of the, uh, the community right before the, uh, right before this webinar. The clients only care about one thing and that's results. They don't care about the number of services that you provide. They don't care even about how you do it or when or what it looks like. They just care about actually getting tangible results. 
Now, these are the four core services that I recommend. We use this, uh, we use software to do this, which essentially just plug and plays and installs in it. So it makes our lives very easy. Also keeps our fulfillment costs and time low and allows us to deliver great results. But you're going to want to, regardless of using software or not, you're gonna to wanna to look for something similar to this because it's easy to do, it's incredibly desirable, and it's a valuable service to your clients. So number one, some kind of lead gen. Miss call text back, web chat widget, Google business, call to action. Uh, also you'll notice, what is this? This sounds like a, a legal form, but like section one, subsection E listings, NAP, that stands for name, address, and phone. And we'll use software called Yext in order to build citations for these, um, for these rankings, which helps with Google Maps, helps with local business SEO, and so on. Lead conversion. We use a map, um, an app so that clients can have a conversation with the leads that come through, respond to them immediately. We call it speed to lead, and it is one of the biggest factors in making sure that you're getting a good ROI from the leads you're generating. We can use text snippets so that we're able to basically fill in the conversation for clients because we know they're probably not going to respond as fast as we want. Same with video message. Number three, some kind of online reputation management. Review requests, read and reply to reviews, dispute negative reviews, very easy to do, very valuable. Clients do not like seeing negative reviews on their pages. Number four, I've already talked about this one, customer re-engagement. Happy to talk about this more at the end as well if it comes up in Q&A. But this is where we send emails and all kinds of different offers to previous customers of our clients in order to initiate fast sales. In fact, if you ever see um, a competitor, a competitor marketing agency talking about like, we, we guarantee we'll get you this many sales for free, or we'll get you this many sales in seven days with no ad spend, no anything, no whatever it is. It's typically some kind of database reactivation campaign, something like this, where we'll take the client's customer list or their SMS list and we'll send them an offer and then we'll initiate um, and get sales very quickly. All right, let's talk about pricing. My recommendation, we get our first two to three clients for free in exchange for testimonials and case studies. I get pushback on this sometimes with people saying, don't do that, never work for free, know your worth. But like, this is a safe place. So between you and I, if you're just getting started, your worth isn't very high. And in fact, it's actually dangerous because you're asking a business owner to take their, their baby, the thing that they have all of their hopes and dreams into and hand it over to someone without a case study or testimonials or any proof that this is going to work and not just like burn their business down to the ground. That is a very bad proposition. So I have no problem at all doing the first few for free. I'm going to do this. If we're doing ads, I'll have the client cover the ad spend, but I'm going to set everything up. I'm going to do all of the work. I'm going to get them the best results that I can. And I want that case study. I want that testimonial because then I can go get my next one to two clients, 500 bucks a month. One to two more, thousand bucks. One or two more, 1500 bucks. And then from there, I will typically offer three packages. Let's hypothetically 500 bucks a month, 1500, 2500. Easy math here again. Seven clients at around 1500 bucks a month puts you over 10K a month. Seven clients, right? Seven. Not 70, not 700, not 7,000 clients. Seven. And this is why I truly believe that if you're committed to doing this, these aren't just like reasonable, conservative, realistic goals. These are kind of like the baseline of what we should be setting for your agency. So to me, 10K is like that starting step. We hit that, we hit it as fast as we can and we push really hard from there. But like the real fun starts at 10 to 20K, 30K, 40K. And then we start to play in, in sort of um, life-changing territory around uh, 50K to 100K and end up from there. But like 10K, if that's your ultimate goal, my recommendation is we make that your new minimum goal. Like that's what you're gonna hit. Because again, seven clients at 1,500 bucks, seven, they're out there of the 33 million. I could go on. Oh, look at that. I missed all my green ones again. I got so excited. All right, moving on. Let's, uh, on this topic of, of doubts and fears and so on, let's talk about the millionaire mindset. The mindset hacks of seven figure agency elites that allow them to start, build, scale, wildly successful agencies in record time. Number one, probably the most important is that successful agency owners are committed and not just interested. So when you're interested in starting an agency, you do what's convenient. When you're committed, you do what it takes. There's not a whole lot more to be said about that. Like when you're committed, you make it happen. When you're interested, you do what you got and you slide it to the side and you don't really pursue it as much as you could. 
my recommendation there is like if you're sort of trying to bridge this gap away from interested and like committed and you're not really sure what that looks like or how to take that or how to boost up the motivation to do it is uh, is to really get clear on why this is important to you and what it can provide for you and for your family and for your life um, without getting too without getting overly emotional here because we got a lot of slides to go starting an agency was one of the single greatest decisions of my entire life like my life today compared to where it was 10 years ago is unrecognizable not even close um, I started from nothing was eating rice and beans had no money had quit the corporate world lost confused scared everything was bad like it was just a bad scene but I was committed and I knew that I was like, I have to make this work. And basically, I'm going to make this work or I'm going to die trying. And it was that attitude of essentially burning the boats and going all in that paved the road for the future successes. So we could talk about that more later. But for now, let's leave it there. High achieving, goal oriented, ambitious. Clearly, this is going to take some work, but it's not rocket science. It's more like stone cutting where you just like hammer away on a rock until it breaks than it is fine carving like we don't need any incredibly masterful skills here we just need to be dedicated and motivated to show up and do the work growth minded i said this at the beginning but great marketers are trained and not born i was not born a marketer i learned all of this just like you're learning all of this now so these are skills that can absolutely be studied and learned and practiced uh, also a forcing function and it's usually financial so they've done a study and actually they've done a number of studies but the most famous one is they were trying to figure out how successful someone was going to be and they found when they made a financial investment into their goals they were five times more likely to actually achieve them so my recommendation is and obviously take this into consideration of your current financial situation don't completely sell your house and live on the street or anything like that but make a financial investment that is large and uncomfortable for you and where you're at right now in whatever goal it is that you want to achieve because the odds of then achieving it are five times more and a goal achieved today will pay off for a lifetime to come counterintuitively most very successful agency owners also suffer from imposter syndrome this feeling that they're not good enough. They're not ready. They're, they're an imposter. They're a fake. Someone's going to find out. They don't really know what they're doing. These feelings are really normal. I've got endless stories of meeting with billionaires and multimillionaires and the CEOs of billion dollar companies. And they are the most normal people that you will ever meet. And they're all a little scared of something. And they're all trying to figure it out as they go. That's what we do. We figure it out as we go. We take one step, then we take the next step. Then we take the next step. Then we take the next step. The analogy that I like to use here is if you've ever driven at night and kind of like a foggy road and you've got your headlights on and you're only able to see like the first, say, 50 feet in front of you. That's what this is like. That's what all business ventures are like. You can see 50 feet ahead, but the only way that you're going to illuminate the next 50 feet is by driving. You can't see ahead until you've gone there. So you've just got to start the car, start rolling it forward slowly and you will get there. Also, bias towards action. They act before they feel ready. Now, this one also gets a little bit of pushback, um, but feelings aren't facts, right? You can take an action despite not feeling ready to do because the results that you're going to get with your agency are, your feelings are irrelevant. The only thing that matters is the actions that you take, the, the behaviors that you do. So that means that you can feel, I don't feel like doing this. I don't feel ready, but I'm going to do it anyway. And you will still get the result versus someone that's like, I feel ready. I got this. And then does no action. All right. Three millionaire mindset secrets. Well, we talked about this one, but I want to unpack it a little bit more. Big mistake. I'll take action when I feel confident. I'm not ready yet. I need to read another book. I need to take another course. I need to do all these things. I'm not ready to fully commit to my agency yet. Well, that's where we go to the four C's formula by Dan Sullivan. What Dan explains here absolutely perfectly is that there's only one way to get to confidence. The very first step is that you need to make the commitment. So I make a commitment that this is what I'm going to do. In the case of what we're talking about here today, I am going to commit and grow my agency. Commitment then leads to courage. Very important understanding of the word courage is that courage is not the absence of fear. It is acting in spite of fear. Great book by um, Richard Branson or... No, I think that was screw it. Let's do it. Another good book. There's another book called feel the fear and do it anyway. That's what this is. Courage is feeling like, oh, I don't really want to do this, but you do it. That leads you to develop the capabilities. 
you can't develop the capabilities unless you've had the courage to take action. And you can't do that unless you've made commitment. And all of that is what leads to confidence. The problem is everybody is there waiting for the confidence first, but it's never going to come. I promise you the confidence is never going to come unless you make the commitment. Then you have the courage to act. Then you develop the capabilities. And that is what leads to confidence. Confidence comes from evidence. We like, we have a word for people that are confident despite having no idea what they're doing. We call them delusional and we don't want to be like that. So we just have to understand and go through these steps. Secret number two, cause and effect. This one's slightly harsher but stick with me where you're at right now is a direct result of your past actions. Everything, the clothes you're wearing, the house you're in right now, the car you're driving, the amount of money in your bank account, all of that is the direct result of previous actions. Therefore to achieve better and by better, very subjective term, more money, more agency success, more clients, etc., We need to become, the kind of person that is capable of achieving that. So to achieve better things, we need to become a better person. Next, talent is a myth. I've said it, I'm going to probably say this a lot. Great marketers are not born, they're trained. These are not mythical skills. They can be learned. Anyone can be successful. I've seen it countless times. Hard work beats talent all the time. Another great expression, do easy things, have a hard life. Do hard things, have an easy life. Truth bomb. Millionaires are millionaires because they think, feel, and behave like millionaires. Again, cause and effect. Our actions, our attitudes, our beliefs, all of that is responsible for what we get. Therefore, this is amazing news, by the way. This is not bad at all. This just means that where you're at right now is a result of the past. Where you want to go to in the future is a result of changing what you're doing, what you're thinking, how you're feeling, how you're acting. And all of that is completely changeable. We're very malleable as humans. All right, millionaire formula. How do you make a million dollars in your agency? How do you grow a six or seven figure agency, multi seven figures? How do you put millions of dollars in the bank? You need a good strategy. This means choosing the right agency model. It means choosing good acquisition strategies. It means making sure that you've got the right pricing structure. You're using the right sequence. You're designing things um, properly right from the ground up, right from the very beginning. Next, sufficient volume. Good example here. It would be crazy to think that you could go to the gym one time and leave in perfect shape. But very often I'll see new agency owners where we'll look over some of their stuff or we'll go through it. And I'm like, well, cool. How did that go? And they're like, well, I, I tried it for five minutes or 10 minutes, or I sent one email and they didn't write back. And then they stop. We need volume. We need to find the strategy that works and then we need to stick with it and do it long enough for it to reap the rewards that we know that it's capable of doing. And then time. I don't want to call it patience. I want to call it basically making sure that we're allowing our investments to accrue the interest. So if we've got a good strategy and we know we're doing the right things for the right people in the right place in the right way, we know we're doing sufficient volume of it. We're putting in enough of the reps in order to make sure that we're getting results. Well, then time is the only other thing that we need to have happen because there is a buying process with agency services. There's a small percentage of people that are going to buy right now, typically 3%. There's a larger percentage of 10 to 15% that are going to buy in the next 30 days or so. And then there's this massive portion of the market that's going to buy in the next four months to 18 months. This is like the 85% rest of the market. And as long as we're doing the right things in the right way, in the right order, we're doing a sufficient volume, success is inevitable. You cannot lose by doing the right things in the right way. Money. All right. The biggest challenge you will face in your agency career by far is not quitting. I like to think of the agency space as a little bit of like a war of attrition where you can just, if you can just survive the longest, you win because so many people come into this with get rich quick scheme ideas or make millions of dollars overnight or any of that. Um, and if you're the one that actually goes back here and does the good strategy with sufficient volume over long enough of time and you just don't quit success just happens. Now, of course we can speed it up. Like we can make it much faster and much better and make you a whole lot more money by pu pulling all kinds of different levers and using the right strategies and tactics and things like that. But simply doing the work and not quitting is enough to almost guarantee success. And this is what happens. The old hockey stick chart, exponential returns. This is the reason that I'm actually quite, um, quite against investing in say like stocks or even real estate. If you've got 50 grand, hundred grand, even a few hundred grand to invest, because if you look at like 8% returns, even on hundred grand, 
you're not going to retire on that. However, if you take that hundred grand and you invest it in your skills, your talents, your ambitions, your future, you can double that and double it again and double it again. And that's where things start to get really exciting. All right, getting clients. Moving on. We're on a roll here. We're on a roll here. I haven't even stopped for water yet. Let me take a quick sip. So make sure I don't completely burn out before we get to Q and A. All right. Also, friendly reminder. I think if you don't mind hitting the um, hitting the thumbs up button, I think I'm seeing more people signing in. So clearly, your thumbs up button hitting is working well. But otherwise, we'll give that algorithm a little bit of a boost and. Uh, We'll carry on how to sign clients. How do we get these 5, 10, 15, 20 clients every single month with consistency and predictability? First, again, I feel like I'm kind of like kicking you in the throat a little bit here with this one. But remember, the number one thing that's killing your chance of success is zero predictability in your ability to generate new clients. That's, that's really how important this point is, is that we need systems to do this on a consistent, repeatable basis. So... What does predictable client acquisition look like? It looks like unlocking consistent and predictable revenue. Say goodbye to feast and famine, you know, those up months, down months, up months, down months, with just feast and feast. It's just good month after good month after good month because you become the one that's in control. Get clients on command, as many as you want, whenever you want. Also positions you as the authority, therefore clients show up pre-sold and ready to buy. It gets rid of tire kickers, penny pinchers, it gets rid of 99% of the objections, because you've already done all of that, handled it all in advance, makes sales a whole lot more fun, a lot easier too. And most importantly, this is the thing that gives you complete time and financial freedom. Because if you only have a certain amount of supply that you're able to give to clients to deliver their services, but demand exceeds that, well, you know that you will never go hungry again. And you're able to stack clients on top of other clients on top of other services and you make more money frees up your time and this is what really allows you to um to achieve that that elusive freedom that so few people ever get to but it's completely possible all right so you got two choices when it comes to getting clients first the quantity method now if somebody this is a morbid story but stick with me if someone came to my house kidnapped my whole family and told me that i had to make a hundred thousand dollars in the next 30 days this is the strategy that I would use. This is the one that was like, we need this money. We need it right now. We're going to go get it. It ain't fun. It's not sexy. It's not easy. Can't automate it. It's not passive, but it's effective and it's profitable. In case you haven't guessed yet, we're talking about cold calling. Basically, making 100 to 200 cold calls a day with the sole intention of booking sales appointments. One of the biggest mistakes people make when they're calling businesses is they try to close them on the phone. That's not the goal of cold calling. The goal of cold calling is to book an appointment and then you're able to go through your process. Let's do some math. I like it because it makes, uh, makes a lot of money. 100 to 200 calls a day, 2%, we, see, we call it a close rate, but this would be a close to get them to an appointment, it means you now get two to four appointments per day. If you do two to four appointments per day and you have a 25% close rate, meaning you turn those uh, appointments into sales for your agency, that gives you one half to one client per day, which is amazing, right? There's a lot of people out there. They're like, I can't get clients. Nothing's working. Often, again, this is sort of just where it comes down to sufficient volume. We can't make five calls. We make one to 200. Um, the people that I know that live and die by cold calling, they make 500 to 1,000 a day. Now, this is what I would do if I had to make that money as quick as possible. I'll show you the script, and then I'm going to show you the, um, my preferred way. So here's the script. Hey, prospect name. This is Adam from Agency Accelerator. How are you? Reason I'm calling today is follow up on a recent email I sent you. Does the name Agency Accelerator ring a bell? Great, no problem. This, that, et cetera, et cetera. Well, we work with plumbers to help them get more of these kind of leads, et cetera, et cetera. Is adding another truck a priority to you? Is taking on a new service area a priority to you? Is the thing that they want? If yes, great. Well, seeing as you're looking for more leads, uh, I'd love to set up a quick meeting so we could talk about what's top of mind and allow me to introduce how we might be able to help. Does whatever date and time work for you? If they say, no, it's not a priority for me, my typical response is one of surprise. I'm like, oh, Interesting. I don't usually hear that as most chiropractors usually, uh, usually are looking for more patients, more leads, etc. Um, still love to set up a quick meeting to uh, figure out like what's top of mind for you. And also allow me to introduce and talk about some ideas that might help. 
does this time, this date work for you? Now, cold calling success is the result of 60% of the script, 40% of your tone. Now, obviously, you and I are kind of having a, a bit of a one-way conversation here where I can't hear you. I can only see your texting and typing back. But what you'll notice is that the script, the script is the script. It is what it is. We can edit it. We can adjust it. And we need to make sure, again, use this one uh, by all means. But what's more important here, because now that you have the script, is the way that you deliver. So, for example, if I say, hey, the reason I'm calling today is just to follow up on a recent email I sent you. That's one way of saying it. The other way of saying it is, reason I'm calling today is to um, follow up on a recent email I sent. Does the name uh, Agency Accelerator ring a bell? I mean, like, you want to have bad luck cold calling. All you have to do is deliver it like um, kind of like a dead fish, like a completely monotone, devoid of any energy or passion or interest. You want to call and talk to people like you're talking to a friend, like you have the right to call them because you do. And like they should be not not putting an expectation that they should be happy to receive the call, but at least like they wouldn't be disappointed that you called. All right, so that's option one. Now let's talk about the quality method. If someone came to my house and didn't kidnap my family and asked me politely to make $1 million in the next 365 days, this is the strategy I would use. Reason is, it's way more fun, leverages technology, it also shifts the power dynamic. So in a cold call, we're, we're losing some of that frame because we're there asking for something rather than being someone that's delivering something of value. So this one shifts that back. So no longer are we a salesperson. We're now a trusted advisor who actually leads with value first. Also, this next strategy is effective and incredibly profitable. This is what it looks like. It's called the marketing audit, an unsolicited video audit of a potential client's business and marketing. We use software to conduct the audit. We send the video report via email. We follow up via what I call the lucky seven. This increases conversion rates by 90%. You're also able to do these things in three to five minutes per audit, which means you can send 60 to 120 in a four to eight hour day. This is what allows you to build your agency on the side and get it up to 10K, 20K a month very quickly. Now you're able to have it transition over. You're able to leave the day job and focus completely on your agency. Same thing goes if you're at an agency right now and you're sitting at less than, oh, we're going to talk about this in a second. Well, I'm getting ahead of myself. I get, I get too excited again. Regardless, we can do these relatively quickly. Simple, repeatable, scalable. Do these every day for as many clients as you could ever want. So here's what it looks like. First off, we use software to do this. Uh, the one that I talk about here and live and love and, and die by is high level. Uh, if you go to highlevelguide.com, there is an extended free trial as well as all kinds of free courses and trainings and snapshots and everything like that under uh, the link that I have there. So highlevelguide.com. I'll put this in the descriptions and the links, whatever it is. They have a prospecting feature. We use that. In this case, got an example of um, mountain scapers landscaping. So I type in a landscaping company. The software then goes and does a crawl of that company and it starts to point things out like have they claimed their GBP? Do they have a text enabled business number? Do they have a chat widget on their website? Are they using a WordPress site? I can look at their reviews. I can look at their rankings. I can look at the words that are being said. I can look at their citations and how many links they've got to their site. I can also use software. This one's free called SpyFu. Funny name, but regardless, and I can do an SEO audit on their website. Again, this takes all of about a minute. So I type in their website. I can see their organic traffic. I can see their ads, their keywords. I can see their competition. I can look at top Google ads by recommendations, which is an incredibly valuable thing to give someone. So now I can show them as like, Hey, these are good opportunities. If you're running Google ads to buy cheap clicks for valuable keywords, I can also go here and you'll notice where the red arrow appears in a second. These are keywords that have just fallen off the first page. So I can show them where they, Hey, like you used to be on the first page for these 16 keywords, but now you're on the second page. I can help you get them back. Also, the software we use to do this is called Loom. It is free. Also, you just sign up for a free account and it allows you to create a screen recording video, actually very similar to what this looks like here with like my face in the bottom corner and then the rest of the screen up there doing our presentation thing. That is what Loom allows you to do. And then we just send them the link to that video. All right. That was a lot of stuff. Let's keep going. Other thing you can do that not a lot of people want to do, but if you really want results quick, networking. 
reach out to existing contacts. This is a, another script I would highly recommend you use. So it's like, Hey John, hope you're well. Just started a new marketing agency, helping small business owners get more leads and make more sales. And I was wondering if you knew someone who might be interested. Very soft, very easy. Basically no reason not to send that to every single person on your email, scroll through your phone and your contacts, send it to everyone there. Easy to do. Also, you're going to do better though, because you've niched down. So we're not going to say small business owners. We're going to say plumbers or martial arts studios or gyms or dentists or whatever it is. Join and engage in local business chambers or groups. This is not a strategy I like long-term by any means. I'm a big fan of starting local, thinking global and expanding, but it's a great way to start because people like doing business with people. And if you can put a face to it, you'll also build up some um, public speaking skills. It's a good thing to do. Also attend or virtually attend industry business conferences or seminars. So a lot of things we can do there. That said, that's all you need to get your agency to seven figures. The presentation is not done. I got a lot more to share with you, but as far as like client acquisition things go, that's it. You don't want to procrastinate though. And you don't want to constantly be swapping around other methods. So pick quantity, pick quality, go networking, stick with it. All right. So we've done that. We're making 10 to 20 K life is good. How do we scale this puppy up to seven figures and beyond? Not to mention, how do we take a six figure agency and automate it, delegate it so that we can now have way more time freedom. Well, let's talk about that now. And the way to talk about it is about systems and SOPs, which I appreciate are the most boring terms in the world, but we do not create systems and SOPs just for fun. These are designed to solve and prevent problems getting in the way of your goals. One of the biggest things that I'm looking at anytime I'm creating marketing, whether it's for a campaign for Amazon or Google or Meta or a small local med spa or whoever it is, I'm always looking at theory of constraints, solve problems, eliminate bottlenecks, plug the funnel. Where are people falling off? What do they need more of? How can I help? Now the theory of constraints methodology for identifying the most important limiting factor, a constraint that stands in the way of achieving a goal. Now, most agency problems, and I would argue 99% of them come down to just two simple things. Number one, not having enough clients. Number two, not getting good enough results. Now, until your agency is at $100,000 per month or more, these are the only two problems you should focus on. And I appreciate if you're just starting, or even if your agency is at like $3,000, $4,000 a month or more, this sounds insane, but trust me on this one. We do not need to do anything fancy to get an agency up to hundred K a month. And actually well beyond that, but like that is the number. So 10 K is our new minimum. hundred K is kind of what we're shooting for. And if we're at less than that, we need to focus on something we call GTKT. Number one, how can I get more clients? This is the GT get them. Number two, how can I get them better results? This is the KT keep them. That is literally it. We need to do everything in our power to get more clients and to keep them for as long as possible. One more point on that. If your agency is at less than let's say 10 K a month, 80% of your day should be spent on getting them. That's it. Like if you are doing less than $10,000 a month in revenue for your agency, the problem is a lack of clients. We need more clients at $10,000 or less. We're, we're still fragile. We, uh, like if we lose a client or two or three, we're in a dangerous position, we can't scale. So we need to increase your clients by focusing on the methods that I've taught you up until this point. All right, let's talk about SOPs. What do we create SOPs for? Well, first of all, an SOP is a standard operating procedure, which makes it sound way more fancy than it is. What it really is, is a process. It's, um, a checklist, uh, or a guide, something that's going to show us what to do and how to do it. And what do we create SOPs for? Anything you do more than once, anything that you're repeating. So creating new client accounts, sending contracts and invoices, getting access to client social media accounts, collecting client information, launching new campaigns, creating and presenting reports, requesting testimonials. All of these things need SOPs. Now SOPs do not need to be thousand word documents. They could be five lines on a Google doc. They could be a few notes, but they need to be accessible so we can repeat them again and again and again. And that is how you remove yourself from the agency delivery equation. So there's three key agency SOPs that I want you to start with. The first of which is anything related to client acquisition. Because again, remember if your agency is doing less than let's say 10 K per month, 80% of your day needs to be spent on getting more clients. And we need to systemize SOP this process so that we can do it again and again and again and again. You, you basically get your agency to start printing clients and printing money. So for example, 
We create SOPs for outreach. How are we sending our direct messages? How are we making our calls? How are we sending our emails? What does the marketing audits look like? Follow-ups, DMs, calls, emails, referral requests, case study creation. All of these are things that we should be thinking about so that we can stop thinking about them later. It's the same reason that a lot of um, famous people have uniforms. So Steve Jobs in his black turtleneck and Zuckerberg in his gray hoodie and who else is there? Lots of other people in there typical uniforms. They don't think about it. They just automate the whole thing. It's just this standard thing. We do that with the systems in our agencies. So we know, hey, DMs, what am I doing today? How many I send in? How am I doing this? Et cetera, et cetera. And the beauty of these processes is that it prints out clients on a consistent, predictable, repeatable way so that we always know what we're going to get and how we're going to get it. All right, next, client onboarding. What we want to do here is create a system, an SOP, for when we get a new client, what do we do and what does that process look like? The last thing you want to have happen is a client be like, yeah, that sounds good. I'm, I'd love to hire you. And then you'd be like, all right, I guess we start now. Like we need a system. So contract and payment. Do we have an agreement in place? How are you going to collect payment? Internal kickoff meeting. When are you going to set the call to go over what's covered, what's not, how to get a hold of you, what about questions, what your deliveries are? Onboarding questionnaire. We need access to their information, their names, their address, their phone numbers, possibly their social media accounts, their properties, anything else that's going to help you do your job. Setting up client accounts, especially if we're using software to do this, we create sub accounts for those. Reporting, same thing. One of the best pieces of advice I can give you when it comes to keeping your clients around is to over communicate at every stage, definitely in the onboarding phase, but continue to over communicate by sending weekly reports. There's people that say you can send a report once a month. That's nonsense. Don't do that. That's why most clients leave everybody. Don't do that. We communicate all the time. I send clients weekly reports. It takes me two minutes. And I, I think of them as like $10,000 an hour activities because they're just, they pay so much money by just keeping your clients informed of what's going on and client launch meetings. All right. <clears throat> Still rocking and rolling. Next service delivery. This is an example of service delivery for a Facebook ads process that we use. So essentially we get business page manager access. We create the client account in a high level sub account and link Facebook. We set up instant form and landing page. We set up the automations. We create the variations of the ads, assign metrics, create da, 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 da. The beauty of doing this is that in the early days, it helps make sure that you stay on track and you don't miss things. Later on, it helps you to bring on support and freelancers and contractors and help. And they now have an exact step-by-step -step process so they don't skip things and they don't miss things. You can also find out, well, what do we need that information? Is there something else that we should have that we don't? How do we systemize this to make it quicker? How do we get them better results? We can't do any of that unless we start there. All right. Hiring freelancers. Let's talk about that too. How do we delegate, outsource, bring on support for your agency? Couple of great places to go. Upwork, free up, Fiverr, less so, onlinejobs.ph. I'm gonna give you just a couple quick hiring tips and then show you what you may want to hire for and what you may not want to. Hiring tips. Fill out your bio and company page completely, including picture or logo. One of the reasons that I've had such good success with oh hang on, water. Water break. As a hit the like button break, and we'll uh we'll we'll get back to our schedule. All right, we're back. Uh, one of the reasons I've been able to attract top talent with Upwork is that it looks like a legitimate company and agency, which it is. So rather than just like, hey, here's a picture of a selfie and me in my garage with some stuff and nothing and no freelancer is going to want to take a chance with that. Looks like a legit agency. Be kind, polite, and professional. You are able to rank freelancers based on how they perform. They can rank you too. Higher rank companies get better applicants. Next. You want to try to hire someone today, maybe tomorrow. I'll give you an extra day. Start small, 10 bucks an hour, hour or two a week. We want to start training what I call your delegation muscle. So hiring someone, managing them, getting them to do tasks, things that you don't want to do or maybe need help with. It is not a skill that we're, we're just sort of naturally born with this, these leadership qualities and, and looking after people. These are things that we have to develop. The same thing goes with expenses for your agency. It's very hard to go out there and hire a whole army 
of, um, of junior marketing assistants when you, when it's too late and when you need them, it's a lot easier to build up the muscle of like, all right, these are the screening questions I use. These are the things that I need help with. These are the tasks. This is what I'm comfortable paying. And you can start to build it up slowly, but it is a valuable skill to have. All right. So here are some good things to hire for first. Number one, anything kind of admin related. So I'm going to use the term project management loosely because typically project managers will, um, will charge a lot of money for very uh, complicated ones, but you can have someone do basic stuff like do some of the SOPs and work through those and follow your checklist. Make sure that you're onboarding clients in the right way. Client reporting, same thing. Maybe they can compile the reports. Maybe they can get the information that they need and you can be the one to deliver the final product. Anything research related, including maybe building a lead list that you could then go out and prospect for doing due diligence on uh, competitors, not only for your own agency, but for your clients. So you can figure out what they're doing. SEO. SEO is another amazing thing to outsource for. The reason is, is because SEO is a bit, it's a bit of a tricky beast sometimes. And there are some phenomenally talented people out there that are more than happy to, uh, to take that off your plate especially local SEO, which is the way that I like to teach marketing agencies. We start by doing for local businesses. This is because local SEO is largely a factor of on-page optimizations and backlink building. And we normally do those through something called citations. We can get a little more nerdy in there later if we want to. Also anything tech related, building funnels, automations, setting up workflows, anything to do with software. Again, there are very talented people out there who know this stuff inside and out, and it's simply not worth your time because you would be better off focusing on getting more clients. All right, bad things to hire for. Facebook ads, bad thing to hire for, at least initially. And the reason is, if you don't know what you're doing, with Facebook ads, then hiring a freelancer, especially through a site like Upwork or someone that isn't personally referred to you is likely to go sideways because you're not going to be able to tell what they're doing or if it's good or if it's bad, there's also budget involved. So not my favorite thing. I'd rather you learn Facebook ads first, spend a little bit of time trying to figure out how the ads manager works, what a good ad looks like, how to do proper tracking and performance. Then we can delegate from there. Next client acquisition. I do not recommend any agency doing less than hundred K a month outsources client acquisition. Getting clients is the most important part of running an agency. You can hire someone to basically do everything else for you, but going out there and getting clients and having those conversations with them and putting yourself out there, that is the most valuable thing that you can do as an agency owner. Because if you're able to generate clients for yourself, you will never go hungry again. That is the most valuable skill. So do everything in your power to learn how to, um, how to acquire that skill. Next client operations manager. My recommendation, we don't need to hire a client or ops manager until you've got at least 15 to 20 clients, usually more. A virtual assistant is going to be able to get you 80% of the results at like 5% of the cost. All right. Well, my friends, excited to start implementing these principles and seeing results. Well, quick note, if you want to learn more about how we can help current and aspiring agency owners scale to six and seven figures and beyond, we do have a link with some more information. It is join.agencyaccelerator.io. For anybody here, I will also make sure to put this in the descriptions below, but just in the off chance that my copy and pasting skills don't work, you're gonna be able to go there. And as a bonus and a huge thank you to sticking around through this entire presentation, we've been going hard for like a whole hour straight. So good for you. Oh, I've got a bonus first, but prior, prior to the bonuses, quick note on the program. It's not a course. What you're getting is a proven path systems and one-on-one -on -one help from experts, people who have done this before built multiple seven figure agencies. There's the coaching, there's the community, there's multiple calls every week, a very engaged community, all of the systems, all of the processes, everything and more. Also talk to the, uh, our VP of enrollment and what they told me I was able to do is offer a $2,000 discount, but we have to limit it to the first 15 people only from this webinar. So if you're interested, when you speak to the sales team, the enrollment team, make sure that you let them know that you were on this webinar and that Adam mentioned the $2,000 discount, uh, because otherwise they're going to, uh, won't be able to take advantage of that. So make sure to do that there. Also going to include all of these. So basically every course I have on email marketing, content marketing, Facebook ads, digital marketing strategy, creating marketing plans, all of that as well is included with the program. All right. That was a lot of stuff. So what do you say we bust out the Q and a and we make it happen? Oh, all right. I'm gonna grab some water. I see some, um, see some comments already. I think I've got 
KJ in there somewhere as well. KJ, my man, if you want to copy and paste over some questions or what you can do actually, dude, is if you put them in, um, put them in the chat, I can like highlight them on the screen. I'm not sure how that'll work. We can just throw them in Slack. We'll figure something out. I'll grab some water. <clears throat> Thank you, Scott. Glad you made it, buddy. Good to see you. Uh, how do I like the book, Emeth Revisited? Yes, good. Good book. Valuable book. Uh, less so from an agency owner perspective, more so from uh, the perspective of looking at what your clients are going through. All right, let me see if I can... I'm going to see if I can just switch my camera. Da -da 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 -da. Window, options, picture in picture shape. Can I go tall, square? I can go square. Hang on. I feel like I'm in a weird movie from the 70s, just moving things around. Hang on, let's see if I can do this. Moving things. Because I'd like to keep that on just for anybody else that's coming there. Oh, there we go. Hang on, We're, it's working-ish. So I can leave that at the bottom. Oh, it didn't work, did it? Hang on one sec. We'll figure this out and we'll hit some questions. All right. And let me check. KJ, questions when I'm ready. All right. Dude, if you're still here as well, do you want to um do you want to copy and paste these over into the chat here? I'll just say chat here and we'll know and then I can add them. It'll it'll just be easier. There we go. Otherwise, let's go back here. Du -du -du. All right. So I'm going to, actually, I might have to, to kill this one here for a second. Oh, technology. All right, let's go full screen, just like the old days. And then we're going to go the question, starting with, do you want to, uh, do you want to niche down as far as you can? Oh, here you go, KJ. Good job, buddy. Let's do that. Okay. This is from Two Fresh Detail Studio. Do you want to niche down as far as you can? For example, uh, would you do home services or niche down to roofers or landscapers? Yeah, I would niche down to roofers or landscapers. Um, and the reason is, is because, well, twofold. Number one is that it's going to enable you to be more specific with the language that you're using. So you could be like, hey, roofers, hey, landscapers, hey, whatever it is. The other thing is that roofers and landscapers don't, like, they don't consider themselves alike. So if we start talking to them like, hey, we help roofers and landscapers, we are essentially getting rid of any specialty language and they're going to be like, yeah, I'm not a roofer. I'm not a landscaper. Like that's not relevant to me. Now you and I both know that the marketing required for either of those is going to be the same, but they don't. So check. All right. Let me see. Next, should I gain experience on Upwork or similar as a freelancer before I launch my niche marketing agency? And does Agency Acceler course teach you how to make ad creatives and images? Um, okay, so should I gain experience on Upwork first before you launch? It really depends on the path that you want to take, honestly. Like if your goal is to start an agency, then no, start like start an agency right away and then use the strategies I've shared with you here and get your first two to three clients for free because getting clients on Upwork is arguably harder because you've just put yourself right beside all of the other freelancers on Upwork. So you're going to be starting from scratch there zero. Pardon me. You're going to be starting from zero there as well. But now you're literally just going side by side a million other people that are going to look and sound exactly like you with the same offer. Um, does Agency Accelerate course how to make ad creative images? It's not a graphic design thing, but I show you where to get images in the Facebook ads accelerator uh, portion of the Agency accelerator. I like accelerator. I just had this realization. I like accelerating things. Um, KJ, will this video be archived on the channel? Hopefully, but maybe not. We will see. We will see. Uh, it and a lot of that has to do with because we've got that two thousand dollar offer here, off, which we can't see now. Let me slide it over. Um, I might not archive this on the channel for long because it's limited to just 15 people and and otherwise it'll get a little bit messy okay where was i there we go question i work at home for a marketing agency i fear splitting my time how long realistically a day will i need for this 
bring back the fire TV. What's the fire TV? <laughs> I don't know. Is that an inside joke that I just don't know? I'm trying to remember. Or is like, anyway, we'll talk about this later. Um, how many hours do you realistically need? Oh, it's, it's funny because it's like, it's a question of how quickly you want to achieve it um, more than anything. So can you like, can you make measurable progress with like an hour to two a day? Absolutely. You, you totally can. So it's like, if you can wake up an hour earlier, go to bed an hour later, take a longer lunch from work and like put in like one to two hours a day of solid work, do, of course, do it on the weekends as well. Wake up Saturday morning, bit of work in there. Yeah. You can make some measurable progress. I think if you want to like really accelerate your accelerator, um, like four hours is awesome. Like you're going to see some pretty significant results with that amount of time. The goal though is like do whatever you need to do to get the clients or the first client or two so that you can slowly start shifting things away uh, because the, the sooner that you're able to go all in, the sooner that you're going to be able to like reap those maximum rewards and the success that you have in your agency, it compounds exponentially. So it's funny because again, I, I totally appreciate this. When someone first told me that you could make like a million bucks with your agency, I thought they were just totally nuts. I was like, that's insane. No one does that. Um, then someone told me like, Hey, here's how to make 10 to 20 grand. I was like, all right, I can, I can sink my teeth into that. And they showed me the steps and I went through it all. What I didn't realize was that once you realize how to make 10 K a month with your agency, 20 K a month, isn't that much harder. And once you do that, 50 K a month, isn't really different at all. And once you do that, a hundred K a month, isn't double hard. It's just more of what you've done. So that's the reason that I'm, I'm pretty, I feel pretty strongly about like, if this is what you want to do, like we, we do it now. Um, because think about easy math, let's say, um, 20 K a month and we don't do it for another year. Well, that's 240 grand of lost revenue. It's a lot of money. All right. Do, 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 do. Uh, will you help us pick a niche and create an offer to fast track the first month's results in the agency accelerator? Chris. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. In fact, module one is, um, we call it nail your niche and module two is million dollar agency offer. And it's literally that like we, we have an exact system and a process and checklists and guides and everything. Like we make sure you have the best niche for you. And then we go through and we design the absolute perfect offer put together the packages. We have something called the magic pill, which is our way of creating an irresistible offer that eliminates miseries. So fears, pains, problems, frustrations, all of that, as well as uh, delivers miracles, the wants, dreams, goals, desires. All right, Jesse, I'm trying to figure out the best client acquisition strategy for therapists and counselors. Do you have thoughts? And would your agency accelerator help me craft and deliver that offer? So the answer is, yeah, I have so many thoughts. First of all, yes, the agency accelerator is literally designed to help you um, craft and deliver that offer. So, so yes to there. Short thoughts though, without diving more into too much detail, best client acquisition strategy for therapists and counselors. So therapists and counselors, again, the offer is constructed directly related to the niche that you're in. So I'm, gonna, I'm trying to think of like therapist counselors where... They're obviously private because we wouldn't do it for, for, um, um, non-private public healthcare Canada. Right. Uh, then essentially, you know, it's funny, Jesse, because the, there's the main way that I would like to use, which is like a straight up kind of like call to action of like, do you have this problem? Get this thing for me. The best thing is an offer that's relevant to the therapist or the counselor. So the reason that it's not coming out immediately is I'm trying to figure out is like, is it marriage counseling, couples counseling, family counseling, whatever it is. Let's say marriage. If it's a marriage counselor that wants more clients, then my offer is, do you have this problem in your marriage? Do you want to expand this? Do you want to get more of this? Would you like more love in your marriage? Knock my mic over. Do you want more, whatever it is? We have this thing, get your first session free, do this, whatever it is. And then we'll guide them through depending on where they're getting most of their traffic. This one is probably one of those cases where I would use Facebook ads for, I would also double down on Google ads and local SEO. Uh, those would be really big for me. And then I would send them to a landing page that mirrors the language that I used in my offer. So it's like, yes, are you a, a marriage part of me? Do you have this thing? Do you want this thing in your marriage, et cetera, et cetera? Here's what we can do. Here's through the funnel. And then the funnel will get them to get their name, email, phone. Then we'll follow up with them through automatic SMS because most therapists and counselors aren't going to call. Ideally they would. Um, and we could even send them through depending on how sophisticated your client is there. 
ideally they would make some kind of a VSL, video sales letter, because that human element is gonna be just so much stronger. And by video sales letter, I mean like more of a face to camera thing, but we could have a few slides in there. That's a fun one. I, I, I'm gonna think about that one a bit more too, because I'm trying to think of the last time I had what we did for uh, previous counselor clients. And yeah, it was, it was very much related to the offer that they sold. Cool. Do, 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 do. All right. Let's keep going. Do, 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 do. Oscar, what's the difference between Digital Marketing Academy and Agency Accelerator? Uh, Digital Marketing Academy is um, marketing, content marketing, ads, strategy, things like that. Agency Accelerator, Agency Accelerator is a program designed to help you start and or scale a profitable marketing agency. So it is focused on everything, actually what Jesse was just asking, niche, offer, client acquisition, funnels, lead gen, onboarding, fulfillment, results, referrals, retention, etc. cetera. Uh, Kadosh, do you need to have a background in marketing to succeed with Agency Accelerator? No, it helps though, for sure. Um, but like I said, great marketers are trained, not born. So when I started my first marketing agency, it was by like literally pure ignorance. I had no idea what I was doing. I started with websites and then I figured that out and I figured this out. Uh, fast forward 10 years and obviously we've got a few things dialed in now. But um, it helps, obviously, but we can make up for it with two things. The first of which is that commitment, not just interest, but like we've got to like, is this what we want to do? Are we committed to doing it? And then everything else can be learned. Oh, do, 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 do. All right, KG, if you see more, let me know. And otherwise I'm gonna keep hitting through these. Oh, hang on, sorry, they're moving fast. Let me keep going. Do, 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 do. Manuel, last year I got 15 clients on one month. Now I'm starting with seven. I'm running ads to get more clients, but that is always the complex, uh, always the complex on this business. How I can improve the process. Yeah. Well, first of all, getting 15 clients in one month is fantastic. Starting with seven, still good. Um, running ads is not my favorite way to get clients for an agency doing less than like 50K a month. And the reason is, is we normally don't have the time, money, or energy to spend optimizing that process. And the other side of it is that there's just better methods out there. So I would recommend the strategy that I talked about earlier in this video of like go for quantity or go for quality and, um, and push those. So like call, DM, email, use the uh, marketing audit strategy. It's fantastic. That is the main one that we, um, that we teach uh, and, and expand on. Uh, inside the program. It's like, it's really effective. Matt, what software and systems do you recommend having set up before we go after our first clients? Oh, good question, Matt. You know, it's funny, dude, because the answer is like in a perfect world, I would go to, um, uh, just go to highlevelguide.com and that'll get you an extended 30 day trial to get the software and then you can do that. But like, I'd almost get the client first, then you can get the software because you can use the money that they pay in order to buy whatever software that you need. That's very much how I funded my agency growth in the early days. So I would take on like an, uh, an SEO client. I'd be like, I don't know how to do SEO. So I would hire someone to do SEO. I'd lose all my profits, but then I'd buy the software, I'd hire a consultant, they'd show me everything, they'd do all the SEO, I'd watch and figure it all out. And then the next client I had was all profit. All right. Do, do, do. Question, how long to go through your initial materials and get started? I pick a niche. Yeah. Oh, bring back the Fire TV. Is that why I understand now? KJ, you put in the name of it. I thought it was a funny saying. I also don't know what the Fire TV is. It was like the Amazon TV. But regardless, let me answer that. Um, actually, Alex, you're not here right now. Alex is our um, client service success director. He would have the timeline on all of this, but it's... I think what we say is like, when you first start, we go through foundations. So it's like, here's the principles. We give you the agency uh, calculator to figure out how much you want to make and how. Uh, we go over something called the agency canvas, which is the layout of everything. And that takes a few days max. After that, we go directly into niche. This is like a one week process, really. Do not want it to take long. So ideally less, but like we, we sort of bucket for a week. After that, then we go into the offer. The offer is probably the most important part. So we give this a week or two to like really structure out the offer and make it irresistible. Then we move into the agency launch. This takes about a week because now we're setting up domains and hooking up all the tech and doing all the pieces and the, the 
VSL and the mini webinar we use, we have something called a client converter webinar that um, basically does the heavy lifting and the selling for you. So that's, forgot what we're up to, a couple weeks there. Then after that, it's client acquisition. This one is as long or as short as we want. So we could be up and running in a few days on that one because we'll pick a method that's going to be best for you and run with that one, but we can add more as we need. After that is sales. And the sales process, again, I like to go through that pretty quickly because we're going to need it for our calls. And then after that, we have systems and scaling. And this one will go on uh, for the time be foreseeable future to like build in the systems and the process and the SOPs. So the short answer is we've had uh, clients in there get up and running within seven days of joining the program. So it's like they join, they get their niche, they get their offer, they get their agency launch and they're out and they have their first client in seven days. And then we have others that take uh, three to four weeks in order to do the same thing. So it's up to you, but we don't put brakes on you. You go as fast as you want, which is kind of what I encourage. I like speed. Hence the accelerator. All right, let's see. What else have we got? Do, do, do. On, oh, I hope I pronounced this right. Anye? Anye? Let's go with that. Angie? Angie? Anye? One of those. Uh, my focus, real estate agents. I am guilty of waiting when I know I'm ready. The hardest part for me is designing the offers and the pricing. Yes, so, yeah, you're not alone. Like, everybody... Everybody waits until they're fully ready, which is why I love that four C's model of like, we need to make the commitment, then we have the courage, then the capabilities come, then the confidence comes after that. The best thing that you can use, we have this saying um, inside the program, which is like MIA, massive imperfect action. MIA all day, that's it. Massive imperfect action. It does not matter how we feel, doesn't matter what we think, doesn't matter what we say even, it matters what we do, like that's it. Like your results are literally just a factor of the do part. So whatever we have to do to get that first step going is all that matters. Because again, think of those headlights, like the next step um, reveals itself from there. And yes, offers and pricing is tricky. The The advice I can give you without knowing more about where you're at and everything is uh, we have to design them specifically to the niche that you're in and their pains, problems, fears, frustrations, and make sure that it is lining up with that. Yeah, okay, perfect. Yes, awesome. The fire thing, good, good. Jasmine, what are the pros and cons for being a consultant rather than an agency owner? The, there's, a, there's many on both sides. Um, the big one is freedom, I think though. Like the, the freedom that comes from an agency, especially long-term, like when you're a consultant, you're the person. This is actually the reason that I stopped doing consulting. So at the end of my consulting career, I was charging 5,000 bucks an hour to do consulting calls, which sounds insane. Like if you'd ever, ever told me that, I would just thought it was just the most crazy number. The problem was, is that people kept paying it and I didn't want to do it anymore because I had to do the calls. So therefore I had to stop what I was doing. I couldn't go pick up my kids from school. I couldn't do this. I had to plan my day around these calls. That's the the downside of consulting. So the upside is like, and, and it took, uh, granted, I didn't come out making five grand an hour. It started like 50 bucks an hour and, and expanded from there. The agency, on the other hand, it makes money whether I'm there or not because I have now good freelancers, contractors, outsourcers, team, people work through things. I know when I'm available for the clients. I record most things. We call it asynchronous communication. So creating videos, sending messages. Therefore, I don't really have meetings um, with the agencies. So really, it depends, I think, on what you're after. Also, you can't sell a consulting business very well because it's typically you, whereas an agency, you can sell. There's, yeah, there's, there's pros and cons to both, but I like the agency model. In fact, actually, on one more note on that, it's interesting to watch. There's a lot of other, say, big influencers in the space that are talking about like, yeah, if I had to do a new business, I would do an agency. If I had to start a new business, I would start an agency. If I do, um, there's there's a reason. They're still just one of the best, if not the best uh, business model I know of that enables you to do all of these things and work in the, the cool world of, uh, of marketing. All right, let's see. I'm going to keep trying to scroll up and then back down. KG, if you got more, let me know. Yes, exactly. The downside of consulting. Real estate every hour of the day. Yeah, my wife used to be a realtor and we did all the marketing for her and um, it was fantastic. It was really fun. She was like my first real estate client, her and, and a few other people for her office. And uh, I just went to town on it. So 
Yeah, it was amazing. Do, 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 do. Oscar, is the free Go High Level training course you have up still up to date and relevant? Yes. Yeah. Highlevelguide.com. That one's free. Okay, hang on. Let me see if I can find this. Keep on going back up. Okay, now something you could do remotely from a different country. You do you have to meet clients in person? You do not have to meet clients in person. Completely remote, 100%. Do it from whatever country you want. Um, I spend most of my time in uh, Canada and Hawaii, but for the next uh, few months, we're going to be traveling around uh, Malta, then Rome, then south of Spain, then Portugal, then England. Agency will continue to run. It does not matter, as long as you have an internet connection. All right. Ah, catch you, Kwu. Good stuff. Good to see you. I love your content. I'm trying to run a marketing agency in Nigeria, and I'm having some pricing issues as the dollar uh, to Naira is very high. Any advice on pricing? So you've got two options. The first of which is I'm a big fan of sticking in your local market if you can. So you just have to adjust your pricing accordingly for the local market um, in order to do whatever is reasonable in that area. Barring that, and like once you get some results there and you're able to figure out what you're doing, then you can absolutely expand to other countries. So there is no, um, yeah, there is no stopping you. There's just a benefit of being local at first or at least sticking around local areas because you know the terms and the, the slang and the lingo and the languages and you know like the, the nuance and the culture and all of these things that, um, that are gonna make it easier for you there. All right, Tabby the Tabby Cat. When is too young to start? I don't know if there is, honestly. I mean, like, you could start learning at any age and then maybe start an agency at, like, 14. I bet, like, I prove, if you're 12, prove me wrong. Like, like anything, really, honestly. Okay, let's see if I can find a few more. And then we will wrap it here. Keep scrolling up. Do, 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 do. And scrolling. I think that was a problem. I scrolled way to the bottom and I scrolled the way back up. One, how do I feel about cold emails? Do you only recommend cold calling? One, not only do I love cold emails, I do not even, or pardon me, I should say I don't recommend cold calling. Um, we talked about it today, right? Because like it's a strategy that you can use very quickly. Um, but to say I recommend it would be a bit of a push. It's, um, it's a very effective strategy. Most people don't like it. They don't want to do it. And there's more effective strategies out there. Hence the loom audits, the emails, the DMS, things like that. So yes, cold email. Good. Uh, do, do, do question. <laughs> yeah, it's a good. One. Eric, it's almost as if you want your clients to feel special. That's it, my friend. That's totally it. Uh, Ms. THC, would you niche down from luxury tourism? Yeah, I would. Yeah. Uh, what specifically are you thinking? Like certain kinds of resorts or treats or tour guides or whatever it is. Again, luxury tourism is just so wide open. Expensive jet rental, car rental, et cetera, et cetera. All right. Let me see if I can keep going. We'll find a few more and then we're going to wrap it up. I think that word is good. Um, Brandon, what about cold messages via Instagram, TikTok? How do you feel about that? I feel that they're amazing if you do them well. 99% of people do these terrible. I know because you should see my Instagram DMs. It's a sewer. It's a sewer. It's like somebody went through, copied and pasted like a terrible template and then like a hundred other copycats just did the same thing. So yes, I think it's amazing, but uh, you got to do it right. Byron, my pleasure, my friend. Glad you could make it here. Uh, da, da, da. Chris. Oh yes. I think KJ copied that one. So yes, I will definitely bring back the fire. Nervous about the time, the nitty gritty and customer options I will do after getting the client I can land all day. Then work begins. Yes. Sort of. Right. It's like once you figure out how to do the services and deliver the results that you're going to do, um, it does become repeatable and scalable. This is the reason that I'm such a die hard advocate of like niching down. We need to pick a niche and focus on them because once you've got that, what you're going to find is that the services that you deliver to get this kind of client and this kind of niche results 
are the same things you can do over here and over here and over here and over here. And you get really, really good at it. Um, in my agency, before I hired anyone, I was running, like, I wish I could remember the exact number, but it was so long ago, but like well over 20, maybe not 30, but like, let's say 25 for easy math. I think it was like 27, but we'll say 25 clients. So I was running 25 clients on my own at a few grand a month each, uh, before I ever hired anyone to help. And, uh, and it was super manageable. Like at that point I wasn't working crazy hours or anything. All right. Melton, my pleasure. Do, do, do. All right. Last one. Oh, Jesse, you got a good one. How about one more mental health professionals? Good. Yeah. Keep them coming, dude. Um, mental health professionals. So it's too broad again, right? It's like, if I was going after mental health professionals, I mean, I guess, oh no, I know what we're talking about. We're talking about instead of counselors, therapists, mental health professionals. Yeah. We got to focus on like ideally because there's enough of them to justify this ideally we don't just even focus on one of those like we focus on one kind of service for those so it's like i help marriage counselors get more committed couples that needs work but it's not bad smoke mates do i do any fishing oh i used to i actually have a master angler award back from when i was a kid because i caught like a one of the biggest uh, sheep's head bass in Manitoba, a drum it's called, but, um, salmon fishing once in a blue moon now, like once every few years, I should go out more oceans right there. Okay. Gemma, I'm so stuck with what to offer my clients. Been in marketing for 20 years, running an agency for 18 months, but just offering everything and getting bogged down. Oh, Gemma, you are not alone. Yes. You got to stop doing all the things. Uh, we talked about that earlier in the uh, presentation. I'm not sure if you were here for the whole thing, but it's like, yeah, we've got to go down to that rule of one. So it's like one niche, one service, one client acquisition channel, wash, rinse, repeat. That is all you need to get to six or seven figures. So yes, if the business is doing less than that, then too much stuff. Uh, and we simply cannot, like it's just not sustainable. And it makes us look like a jack of all trades, master of none to our clients. And it just makes our lives miserable. Oh man, questions be coming in now. Okay, hang on. A few more. I'll stick around a little bit here. What's this one? Uh, fee, Bain, Chroma. Where and when should we find potential contractors to help fulfill our promises? We covered this. Previous slide. Upwork, free up, onlinejobs.ph. Brandon, you to man. You to man. Matt, does high level include contract templates, payment processing, and CRM features? Yes, it actually does. Uh, yeah, good stuff. KJ, thanks for answering that one. Yes. Charter fishing. No kidding. Well, that's cool. Yeah. That sounds amazing. I love charter fishing. And by charter fishing, I mean being a boat, being a person on the, on the boat, getting chartered. Your wife's from Winnipeg. Hey, that's killer. I grew up in Winnipeg. What part? I grew up in Charleswood and White Ridge and yes, cold, cold. Cologne is a better choice. All right. Okay. I think we got them. Oh, a few more just popped in. <laughs> I'm just, I'm never going to get to go. I'm going to have to go soon because uh, I'm going to run out of water and, and then we'll go. But let's see. Do, 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 Q. My niche is reluctant towards marketers. Every niche is, don't worry. Uh, but they rely heavily on word of mouth and Google reviews. So would the best service to offer them be reputation management and three pack SEO? Yes. Yeah. Also, every niche is reluctant towards marketers. Um, there's like, there's, uh, there's amazing books. It's like everyone hates marketers and, um, all marketers are liars and, um, uh, marketers ruin everything. Uh, yeah, there's a lot on that. So yeah, all good. That's cool. We have, we have our, our work cut out for them. And then when you impress them, things get better. Uh, Annie, I'm just going to say Annie. Uh, you said you did marketing for your wife in real estate and then stayed to one type of marketing. My plan is doing Facebook and lead gen from GHL. Did you find best results from Facebook or YouTube? Uh, we found best results for her was through uh, Facebook. Yeah, we, I wasn't doing a lot of YouTube at the time. Had I, if I could go back, I'd probably run both. Like I would do, um, obviously Facebook and like, and probably Instagram reels as well. And then I would do YouTube as well. All right. Do, 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 do. Top money maker. No, you're awesome. But thank you for being here. My pleasure. 
All right. Let's see. Matt, oh, my pleasure. My pleasure, buddy. Okay. Right on. Yes, absolutely. Yes, and hopefully yes. I think the the webinar should be there now. I'm going to I'm going to sign off now. I think we're going to wrap it there. We should be good. My voice is starting to go, so I'm going to I'm going to fade out before I'm going to start popping cough drops. Everybody, thank you for being here. Thank you for the um the amazing questions. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to come to the webinar to go through this information. Um, big thing for me now is like, let's let's take some action. That's what I really would love to see. I mean, like I said at the beginning, without getting too sappy, starting a marketing agency was one of the best decisions I ever made in my entire life by far. And I know how powerful and how profitable and how life-changing doing it and doing it right is. Like night and day difference, like I said, between where I'm at right now and where I was before. And if you had told me a decade ago that I would be here today, I honestly, I wouldn't have believed you. I would have thought it was impossible. Um, but now that I know and hi the hindsight bias and uh, hindsight being 2020, looking back at the steps that I took and have sort of reverse engineered and done them all. Well, now we're able to create agencies again and again and again. And um, like I said, we, our last agency got to hundred K a month in less than 30 days. And it was just by going through all of these processes. So you've got a lot of good stuff here in this webinar. Uh, for those of you that are curious and committed and really interested in sort of taking the fast track on all of that, highly recommend reaching out to the team here, where it is, there we are, join agencyaccelerator.io. Uh, you're going to have an opportunity to watch a video, another VSL on like what the program looks like, talk to the team, make sure that it's a good fit for you, as well as get a stack of bonuses, a uh, $2,000 discount, extremely limited only to the first 15 people that uh, go through the webinar here. So yeah, a lot of cool stuff, but regardless, thank you again. So good to see you all again and um, talk to you soon.